example. Okay, so this is another one from the notes. It's one having to do with cheetahs. So it turns out the mean atop of speed for cheetahs is uh, top speed for cheetahs. The mean top speed for cheetahs is assumed to be about 60 miles per hour. That's right, cheetahs run really fast. Um, so, um, so we've got no reason to dispute this. So I'm just going to make a statement like that. Okay. Mu is 60 miles per hour. That's our null hypothesis. Um, now, let's say you, you do want to test this because you're a grad student and you're working on your thesis or something and you're investigating the behavior of cheetahs. Okay, so um, so you go to Africa and you uh, get a radar gun and you tell the cheetahs to go run around really fast, I guess. Um, anyway, you take a sample of... Uh, 28, you want to test, uh, what do you want to test here? Well, it's really up to you. Do you want to, do you want to test uh, if the mean is uh, less than 60 miles per hour or greater than 60? Um, or what, what if you just wanted to see if it's um, different? Maybe the, the cheetahs have all been on a, some kind of new diet or something. And, uh, and so they, uh, maybe you want to see if it's, if it, if it's, if they're, Top speed has just changed it all. You can you can do that too. Um, anything's okay. You just have to make sure that there's some kind of equality here in the null hypothesis, and then you'll have a less than or greater than or not equal to symbol here in the alternative hypothesis. So, so um, yeah, okay. So so what we'll do is we'll take a sample of 28 cheetahs. Uh, watch 28 cheetahs run really fast, and then. Um, and I clocked them with my radar gun, and here are, I'm going to put their, those speeds, those top speeds here in list number two in my Texas Instruments 84 plus model calculator, 57 57.3, 57.6, 62.6, 54.8, 57.8, 55.9, 54.7, 57.5. Again, all these numbers are on the website. 59.2, Halfway there, 59, 65, 60.7, 55, 60. 55, 75, 3. 59.6, duh, 52.4, 56.5, 61.5, 62.5, 63.5, 63.5, 64.5, 57.8. Okay, I'm going to double check all that because I have a tendency to screw it up, just like you. 57.8, 65.2, 62.3. 59, 7, Whew. Well, there's three minutes. I'll never get back. Okay, but it's super important that you do that. Check your numbers and and make sure that you do it right. Otherwise, you'll do it wrong. Okay. All right. So let's get um, let's get some basic statistics on that list two there. Get my sample mean. It's fifty nine point two three two approximately. That's in miles per hour. Two three two. Okay, and let's see, uh, my sample standard deviation turns out to be 4.53897, these, these are in units of MUFs, okay, okay, so uh, also my degrees of freedom, remember that's just n minus 1, right? Same as it was for confidence intervals. So this will be 27. 
Um, you have to say it like that too. 27. Now, what's our test statistic? Okay. Um, it's going to be, again, it's x bar minus mu naught over s over square root of n, na, 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 na. okay, 59.2, whoops, screwed that up, okay, start over, try that again, 59.232 mus minus 60 mus all over uh, 4.538. 9, 7 over the square root of, what was my sample size? 28. Right. Okay. By the way, you can tell that the that our, our sample mean is less than 60, right? So it does look like it's actually different, but is it significantly different? That's what we're really testing here. Is it significantly different? Um, and this test statistic is, uh, is what we're using to, to gauge that. Because see, I know that if the null hypothesis is true, then this test statistic should should behave like you know if I took a whole bunch of samples of size 28, it should they should bounce around here. Okay, once I subtract off the the mean for the 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 the, the hypothesized mean and then rescale by this standard deviation. Okay, all right. So anyway, what do we get there? 59. 59.232. Uh, 60, all right, divided by 4.538.97 over s the squirt 28, squirt of 28, okay, got that, get negative 0.8953 approximately, negative 0.8953. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a little cartoon of that. It's sort of like right there. Now, I want to know the chance that I'd see something that strange or stranger. The chance that I would see something that strange or stranger, but with respect to the alternative hypothesis. Okay, here, so we're not just interested in, in knowing if, if, if the, if the top's mean top speed is has dropped drastically but if it's different in either direction so what I'm gonna do is I just wanna know what's the chance that I would see something that strange or stranger in either direction off to the left or off to the right right yeah so in this case because I have that not equal to symbol in the alternative hypothesis my p-value is gonna be the sum of these two tail areas Okay, I got to get this one and this one. So this mark is negative 0.8953, and this mark is positive 0.8953. Okay, so our p value in this case, there are a couple ways to get it. I could just take the total area under the curve, which is 1, and subtract off the area in the middle. In fact, that's what I'm going to do because that's pretty slick, I think. It's TCDF negative 0.8953. 3 up to positive 0.8953 and then you got to drop in your degrees of freedom 27 remember you have to say it like that so this is 1 minus TCDF uh, negative 0.8953 comma 0.8953 comma 27 close parenthesis 0.3785 approximately. Now, is that low? No, that's not very low. 37, 38% chance. Okay, that is if the mean top speed really is 60 miles per hour, then if you're going to go out and do this again, take 28, you know, survey 28 cheetahs and ask them how fast they can run. Um, then you know there's about a 37 38 percent chance that you would see something this strange or stranger okay um, so that's not really all that strange is it yeah 37 something that happens 37 and 38 percent of the time happens you know uh, frequently I think all right uh, now again we can do this uh, a quick and easy way which I certainly encourage this is a t-test right and uh, we've got our data our data are actually in list two, right? And mu naught in this case is 60, 
And this time, though, we're doing this, this kind of a test, right? This is called a two-tailed test. They call it that because cheetahs have two tails. Now, they call it that because the p-value consists of the area in two tails, silly. Gosh, you guys are ridiculous. There, it reminds us the kind of test we're doing. It's a t-test where the alternative is that the mu is not equal to 60. Our test statistic value is negative 0.895 something or other. Which is a something or other approximately what we got. Uh, the p-value is 0.3786 or so. Okay, pretty close. Probably because I rounded or something. Okay, here's our sample mean. Standard deviation reminds us that we took a sample of size 28. Okay.